What's up, everybody? It's Joe LaPuma. You were listening. You were watching the Complex Sneakers Show. To my right, my guy, Mr. Matt Welty. We're here. To my left. Hello. He's here, too. Hi. My camera says, look it, though. What? Wow, I leave the country for a few days. Look what they, <laughs> how they did me. Trinidad. This is real behind-the-scenes stuff. Where are you? Joe LaPuma's... It's okay. Camera I'll share it with my brother. Set is labeled as Trinidad, but yeah, just that's your camera right that's there. Right. Don't worry. I'm focused. Don't worry. I'm focused. You don't have to switch it. I'm just playing. But <laughs> yeah, you heard if you hear if you heard it closely. The tape peeling. Octavia off. is changing it out. Thank you, Octavia. Thank you. How we doing? I'm here in all white, all gray. <laughs> A lot of a lot of commotion about <laughs> really people uh, care that much about your in outfits? the office really Joe in the office that's what it is yeah in the office a few people I'm not lying there was it was controversy no controversy but people noticed people like, oh you're in all white I got a few Slack messages I got a few in person uh, inquiries but we're here fresh we're off. here but we've been away you've been yeah, you've been fresh, traveling a little bit can you speak about fresh it fresh off the jet then I breeze to the beaches uh huh. Blue Yankee fitted. Yeah, Gina Gina there, we yep, there we go. There we go. There uh, we go. Yeah, I was in uh, England okay. for the past few days on some business, and mm -hmm. you know, was soaking up the culture there. Yeah, you had your one tens on. I didn't. I had my TNs. Yes. Yes, and there was a lot of TNs. Yes, and there was a lot of Air Max ninety five. Yes, everywhere. A couple of big, big JLP shoes. Everywhere we went, I bought two pairs of TNs. The blue, a cold wall TNs. Wait, wait, wait. You, you brought them. Brought them. I, I heard bought I them. I brought them. Excuse sorry. Yes. I no, my bad. Sometimes, you know, also jet lag. Uh, yeah. but Even Michael Jordan missed a couple shots. Exactly. Missed a few layups. Um, but <laughs> black, a cold walls I wore the whole, the whole trip. Mm -hmm. And then out there, I'll thank them later. They know who they are. I got um, my first pair of Pata. Barcelona TNs. The T, yeah, you got nice. the. And I say first. Only there. a couple weeks after me. I know you, SOB. He had him first. He had him first. You saw it on the FSR with Black Thought. He had it first. But um, yeah, I had those. So uh, it was a three trifecta TN mm -hmm. weekend, but a lot of Air Max 95s. I hit you for yeah. some. Don't say. But I hit you for some confirmation. Some I hit intel? both my guys. You know, it was like, you ever see Who Wants to Be a Millionaire throwback and you Phone have one friend? call? I call these guys to confirm <laughs> some of the things. Would you And you always pick up. He answers on time. You a little later sometimes, but that's okay. Bro, we're know? not. What is, we're not. Oh, I said when you call. Yeah. No, 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 no. No. I am happy about this big Air Max TN moment, this big Air Max Plus moment. I've been super big on the shoes lately, ever since I interviewed Sean McDowell about them for a story around the Pata yes. Air Max Plus TN. There's lots more coming. I'm hearing that the original Sunset colorway or Tiger colorway, if you want to mm -hmm. call it that, the orange fade, mm -hmm. based on those Florida sunsets, is coming back for fall 2024. So we might have to do that. So and you're wearing a pair. Of I'm wearing. So I'm wearing TNs today. I wanted to talk there TN. I'm very happy for the TN talk. Shout out to all our friends in Australia. Do the accent. Mm, I won't do the accent, but I will shout out to the Tide colorway that Foot Locker Australia just brought back. This was from 2014. They re-released in 2022. They're back again this year. So here's what I love about like being overseas in UK. Mm -hmm. You know that there's some exclusive colorways, but you mm -hmm. can't tell which ones are which. Yes. Some of that, well, some of that nostalgia of going into a yes. store and not, hey, are these exclusive to this Don't region? We miss well, that I felt well, that. I think Yes, and I felt that multiple times during the weekend. Like, oh, I don't think I could get these in the States. And that was such a like good feeling. I think I mentioned it on here before. I always would tell people that the best shopping tip when you go to England specifically is don't go – like it's cool to go to the boutique stores. Mm -hmm. Shout out to all of them. Yeah. But if you really want to leave with something special mm – -hmm. Just go to JD Sports or go to Foot Locker because the chances of you actually getting something that you can't buy in the States is more likely to be at one of those stores than it is when you walk into one of the boutiques that have locations all over the world. And I love that the we you know the Manchester airport, there's a JD Sports. And JD I Sports in the airport is amazing. And it's a great, it's a yeah, great they have a full selection. Yes. And they had the reverse neons, aka Big JLP shoe. The Jimmy the Fallon, Jimmy Fallon ones. ones. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon 95s. But, yeah, yeah, the Jimmy but, Fallon 110. Exactly. Me. And they also had this blue colorway, like this gradient gray and blue colorway that I was like, I don't 
there's a JD Sports close to mm -hmm. this the office. Yeah, there's one in this area in Times Square, and I don't, I didn't recognize that one. I could be wrong, but the like we just talked about, the feeling of discovery. It's nothing great. like it's it. It's great. You used, to, you used to do damage back back in my uh, old days. I remember you Man were putting the black car down. No, oh. Manchester Airport because the JD Sports is right next to the pub in the oh, airport. Oh, dangerous! That, and that was a that was a one two combo Woo. back in the day. Nothing yeah, like, take us through that. Yeah, yeah. my nothing, boy was getting some pints and then not, some ninety five. How many pints deep were we? Uh, quite a few. At, oh, at like eight o'clock. One ten on pints and then spent. A couple yeah. more 110 on the sneakers. Yeah, it's like at like eight o'clock in the morning. So wow. that was, uh, that was uh, wait. So the other thing I noticed, yeah, big Adidas town, like he says. Yeah, it's like he's been beating that drum for decades, mm -hmm. and he's right. Pretty much not all Adidas, but I would say that Adidas dominates uh, Manchester. Um, in there terms is of sneakers. Yeah, there is a lot of Air Max. Uh, yeah, as well. And it, it's always like it, it's funny because that like the shoe has like a CD reputation um, that I learned in in that area. It's a, yeah, it's a lot of kids like <laughs> a lot of like young kids called scallies, etc. That will be like riding bikes with like Under Armour gloves on, like doing. Uh, he brought out the leather gloves. I we didn't talk Doing about various. That. Uh, what were those? No, come missions. on, we don't have to talk about my leather gloves I right now. They weren't. Were they the Fear of God ones? Those were Y three leather gloves. You're Driving a bad gloves? boy. <laughs> you are a bad boy. Wait, what did you do with them? I saw them. I pay attention to detail. We didn't talk about them. But the good thing about this podcast is now we can. And we can put the... And I was like, does this have the fear of God? And look, I stand corrected. The audience is seeing it right now. No, they were the, Y3. The black he, leather Y3 gloves on. He's on demon time when he's traveling. <laughs> Where do you even get those? Not yes, I was at Shanghai Fashion Week with the black, white, three leather gloves on. I was talking to Edison Chen after the clot show. Did and you interview was... Edison Chen with? Hold on, did you have the <laughs> recorder were you, were you, with were you the Y three? The microphone with the with the Y three leather glove. You? No, I did not. Okay, because <laughs> you. But I, I spoke to him the next day after the show, and you know he told me about how the direction he wanted to take his Adidas work was to be a little bit more sleek and sexy, not unlike myself yeah. were his words. And then he also mentioned how. He noted that all the photos circulating of the Adidas clot sneakers that went worldwide, global, the 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 one constant among the variables was a gloved hand in black leather, and he was like, "Who is this person wearing this glove?" Was it you? It was me. Look at him, <laughs> yo. I'm, which we don't need to spend a lot of time on here talking about my gloves, but you brought it up, so that's just a funny backstory. Yeah, Edison Chen being like, "Who is this person great. wearing the I gloves?" I was actually wondering, and I'm glad that I didn't text you about it. And you were wondering earlier yes. on that long flight back from the UK. Not, you were <laughs> no, I was wondering when it went up uh -huh. because I saw it. and I was like, "He's a bad boy." <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I want to get back to the TNs though. Yes, please. please because please. you said the sunset color, but you know the blue ones are very hard to find now. The ones that are the other OG on, on yeah, my yeah. feet right now. The Hyper Royal ones? The Hyper Royal. Okay, okay. The Hyper Royal are, is an OG color. Yes. And those, very tough to find now. Dude, you can't, I'm, like, I'm all in on TNs right now. I'm ready. Like I said, Foot Locker Australia is doing big things. You got the a Cold Wall ones. Did you have a little bit of intel on the black a Cold Wall TN? So I heard that they were supposed to release earlier, and then they got pushed back for maybe kind of like production issues. Or? Production issues, and they were sitting in stores for a long time. Is what you said? I think they were sitting in in some stores, and then I saw the white one in stores, and mm -hmm. I didn't see the black one in the U.S. But like, did you did you reach out to Sam? Yeah, like so I heard rumblings about that, but I don't want to fully. I, it, it's like speculation. I, did you? Confirm yeah, I, I hit a couple people. I talked to somebody at Nike about it who said it's not it's not a production issue. It's not like something like that, a quality control issue. I did reach out to Dr. Samuel Ross, who's Shout been on this show before and who is the designer behind the Cold Wall and done a lot of cool Nike projects. And he told me that, quote, there might be confusion over the uncoated sole unit, which is entirely intentional. You notice that it just looks a little raw on where the bag is. Like a little, like, plasticky gluey? Yeah, like yeah. Un unfinished. And he told me that that was a through line from the Vomero project he did when they did those Vomero 5s a few years back where the TPU coating removal on the upper, and it, it promotes oh. this intentional aging and things looking a little damaged or abraded or worn in a way. So that's from Sam Ross. So, okay, so there was nothing... That I got misinformation. No, it do, it doesn't sound like it. Okay, it's funny when you said the Vomero. I totally forgot he did that age from he. 
early on the Vermeer with the thing in, the, in. I didn't need the thing in the back, the fake computer looking thing. He was early on it though. But thing on the thing. <laughs> I still need the solarized. Solarized, dyed, a cold wall. My first Vermeer, maybe? Could be. Maybe, but cold wall TNs, he crushed it. He crushed it. Leather. The end. Black the, leather, put the gloves on. Handle with care. Sp speaking of. Hold on, I'm not done yet. <laughs> You going Ricky Anderson? One sec. <laughs> oh, turn no. the video on. Joe's doing it. But a, the other thing is, for it someone like who cover an enema of the state, for someone who you know walks on their toes, toes. that upper is like premium leather, but also mm. not wrinkled. It has like this, these like I don't want maybe divots in them. Mm. You could crease them. Are you a toe walker? Yeah. How do you think he got the calves? He always says it. I didn't know right. about this. Yeah, so, yeah, to, yeah. Walk on my toes, but. Always on his toes. That yes, way, this is true. And 10 toes down. Always also on my that. toes, but also 10 toes down yes, at all course. times. Standing on business. But also, um, <laughs> also. Oh, we're going to have a fun one today. Also. <laughs> yes, what? That leather's not cracking at all. Oh? Yeah. So. But they gave me Fat Joe leather? Yeah. Uh, Joe Shouts to Sam Ross. Cracking, crushed crack? it. Those blue ones are super rare, by the way. Speaking of gloves on the hand, today is one of probably like – the biggest day of the year for you? Don't I know what you're gonna say, and that's not fair. What, what? birthday? Yeah, it's Drake's birthday. <laughs> why would you shout to him? But why do you say it's the biggest day of the year? I, mean, I know you're just a huge Drake fan. <laughs> I'm a fan of Drake, but you're, you're not acting, celebrating. You're acting like black and gold balloons. In you're your acting apartment like tonight? he's like my fifty, though. I mean, he's like your fifty two point oh. I don't know if that's if true. Drake, if I don't know if that's true. If but Drake was around, if Drake was around during your fifty era, I can't speak to that. I can't speak to that. But um, October's very own. Happy birthday! <laughs> but but are you going to wish? Are you going to wish him a, a personal happy birthday no. or no? I just did. <laughs> he watches the show. He knows. He's tapped in. Any stores that really impressed you while you were out there? Hip. Really. Awesome store. Shout out to Oliver at Hip. Awesome store. And I got a pullover, like mm -hmm. a black shiny yep. pullover. Mm -hmm. And they had, you walk into the store, first thing, it's like they knew I was coming. Carhartt, Whip, New Balance. You had the oh, Whip nice. and Hip? First, uh, I, didn't, I didn't buy them, but first thing. And How'd they look in person? Really good. It's, it's like a, it's not a colorway that I was like in into per se yeah but the special section of yeah. hip did they beautiful. have wealthy's frame photo on the i took wall? a picture that we could put yeah, no. it to, yeah oh i did yeah. and it's premium you know people make fun of me because uh my camera hasn't been updated that much i don't you know the iphone i always worry about the content like i'm not dealing with contacts being lost for one day no. let alone one yeah. hour so my camera is not up to snuff the specials the suede what was it suede right Yes. The suede of the Speziales gleaming in the mm. photo. We'll put it in here. But Nice and textured. You know, I look back and I was like, "Did is my boy responsible for this? No. If anything, it's the, <laughs> the, other, anything, way it's, it's the other way around. Oh, but okay. Yes. Spent many, many, <laughs> you. Many, many, a, many a night in the Manchester, Liverpool area. There we area, go. Area, so. A humble king. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, that was – but great store. Good, good, good. Uh, again, what I would say – even though we talked about the Air Max 95s, the 110s. Another thing about the Air Max 95s, I love that they wear them beat up too. Okay. It's just such a shoe there that like they yeah. wear them beat up as well. It's like an everyday shoe. And you can appreciate shoe. that. Definitely. But the other thing is awesome Solomons, awesome New Balances. The Speziales were great. Just No Nike? Uh, they had the Fat Joe. They had the Terra Squad Air Force Ones. You know what? At hip. I, I, when I was in Shanghai, there were a lot of Terra Squad Air Force Ones really? sitting on the shelves there. I just don't know how much that shoe connects on a global level. They had Cortez, uh, Nike Cortez, not, not, the, not Cortez. The, exactly. More Cortez coming in 2024. And I by say the way, that exact from Nike. Word. Yeah. Okay. Go and on. what I say to that is again, just like we were talking about a few weeks ago in the states, parity, cool Solomons, cool New Balance, crisp. Adidas and but this is interesting the Nike's not jumping off the shelves you said this about 
well, we like, were shopping in the U.S. a few months ago, how it felt like the Nike product wasn't jumping off the shelves Jordan in the same way some especially. of the other stuff was. I went to Packer Shoes in Jersey City the other uh, over the weekend, mm-hmm. and I would say that at least like sixty percent of like they only have like a small shoe wall mm-hmm. in the store. It feels like very boutiquey, but like sixty percent of like the shoe cutout was other brands. Okay, how did you find Packer? You said you were you were quite hyped in the selection. Yeah, right? Wait, what? Well, you, you ventured out. I just went uh, out in Jersey City for the for the day, but um, it felt really it felt really cool. It was like really high end. Um, a lot of uh, sorry, I'm gonna mess up the brand. The South South Two West Eight, South Two West Eight, uh, Stone Island, um, high end. Uh, North Face jackets, et cetera. A selection you weren't quite expecting. It was just really nice. Yeah. You know, um, Solomon, Hoka, New Balance, yeah. Asics, uh, a lot of Crocs, like nice Crocs. Mm. Um, that, and I was like, wow, just like pretty nice store. A shout out to our friends at Packer, Victor Khan, Mike Packer. Always. Everybody, and the, the, the illustrious alumni who have come through there. It'll take us the whole rest of this episode to ring off all the names. Oh, so forget it. Wait, uh, I went to Nando's twice. You had a cheeky one? Yep, went to Nando's twice. One with the crew, one Had Dola. you been before? What, no. were your, what were your sides? Spicy rice and coleslaw. Is that elite? I don't know. I don't know. Like, what are the right you sides? You didn't get any to fries? Pick? I did get the fries. Okay. But the second day I went, you know, solo missions are always great because you order whatever you want and no one, you know, you know no one's judging you. I got uh, quarter Now ch- the entire audience is going to be judging quarter you. Chicken, so be quarter chicken, and then I got five wings too. Sit down. How hot did you get it? Hot. Yeah. Which is, wasn't that hot. Yeah. What What is your order? Uh, I think I remember. <laughs> we come to this part in the podcast. I think yeah. I have a picture of it. I can dig it up somewhere, but I, just years ago. But I think I got a. I think I got the chips. Okay. And the mushy peas with the. Mushy peas, big thing out there. Yeah, <laughs> this cultural uh, on the ground listen, reporting. <laughs> Forty-eight hours. Forty-eight hours. Take me back. I want to say very briefly. You mentioned North Face. I was at the launch event for the North Face Undercover line last week, and Nike is not working on any undercover projects right now. I don't know if there's going to yeah. be any in the future, but no plans right now, which is a bit of a bummer for me because I've always been wealthy. Hopefully, you can attest to this. A Kiyosu guy. Under, yes. Yes. Head to toe in like the leafy, uh, what was it? What was like the leafy spandex yeah. shorts? Okay. Sort of I did not do the spandex shorts, mm-hmm. but. You didn't have those back in the day? I did not have the spandex shorts. Okay. I did have some Gyakuso shorts, but I just love Jun Takahashi's Nike work so much from the footwear to the apparel. And I think a lot of that stuff was ahead of its time. And a much needed example of modern footwear that people enjoy rather than just relying on retro yeah. things. So I'm I'm sad if we don't see any more of that. But it was also cool to see the North Face project because I think that that picks up where Gyakuso left off in a way of similar color palettes and things like that. was out and about the other day, Joe, and went to the North Face store mm-hmm. over here on Fifth Avenue. Yeah. And one thing I saw there that you should go and just, put, just putting you on, big JLP thing. Uh-oh. Black... North Face CDG puffer vest. Ooh, you gonna I go like right that. after this shoot? Just the just the traditional like. That's n- the one near Torno. Yeah, uh, just like the black Nipsey vest, but with the CDG logo on the okay. other chest. Okay, maybe go I'll... with the Pegasus. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah, your your favorite. Yeah, not your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> not your favorite <laughs> cdg though i'm cdg downed always okay we down like the vest the down, it's a down yes. vest yeah with the goose feathers yes goose feathers in it um i want to i want to shout out to one nike employee real quick <laughs> you know who i was talking about yeah and i was gonna say go ahead the prodigal son is back he's back you guys kind of look alike no really not, i mean who? older version I right? really? i don't know who you're talking about i don't Dick know Pulver? oh you, you're the third twin <laughs> i i have no. no relation to the pulver no, brothers but Jake Pulver is back in the city, so act, how ac- close, act accordingly. How close are you? I know. You like get I, pulverized? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. Never never misses an opportunity to use So joke. you guys are close. No, I wouldn't say that. Where'd you welcome him back to? You guys go to Emilio's, Carbone, <laughs> came back? He has my number. Okay. He has my Shots number. It, but just one of them came back. As far as I know, yeah. Okay. I'm not sure how strong the magnetic pole is, but hopefully we get Dylan back as well. Wait, so Jake's back? Did did you play the Skylar Gray Diddy coming home song like they did when Carmelo <laughs> was coming back to the Knicks? <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Yeah, big shouts Knicks family. Shouts to Jake, welcome home. Yes, yes, absolutely. 
Should we talk about the sneakers we have on feet? I know we kind of already referenced mine at least briefly, but I don't want to be selfish. We'll go deep into them. Yeah, so we talked about the TNs. You got the purple, I mean, I'm on TN voltage. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So purple TNs, purple blue. Sometimes I can't tell, but these have been confirmed as the purple pair. But I have the blue pair as well sitting at home somewhere. From what year? Uh, it was a Champ Sports release, uh, maybe like 2016. Correct me on those. that in the comments. By the way, I, I'll just I'll just throw out one more little TN nugget. I don't know if we could show it just yet, but the Nike KD17. I know the 16 has just come out, yeah. but the KD17 looks a little TN inspired. Okay. Similar vibe. And it goes back to your story. You know, ball players like the TNs because Kevin Garnett. It's all connected. Anything it's is all possible. Connected, isn't it? Anything is possible. That's what he said. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah. yeah. yeah he, he almost, when he saw McDowell, he almost said that on campus, <laughs> too, right? We need Sean McDowell on here yeah. talking, talking Air Max. Well, let me look into Trinidad's camera and tell him. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you got on feet? Inter Milan 97 is not the friends and family version. These are the GR version. Have you worn the friends and family yet? Yeah, I did. I wore those for an episode in Atlanta. So, yeah, Inter Milan, these are the GRs. Love this shoe still. All, Air, you know, Air Max, baby. I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. And uh, then our friend. Our friend, Bima. Shout out. What, <laughs> what is it? Yeah, wow. <laughs> so our friend, Bima. Okay. No, 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 no. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Sorry. Our friend, Bima, the grid hurricane, 3D. Is it cons- Sorry. Sorry. Is it considered a tongue fuck if you have that much space between sock, pant, and shoe? I don't think so. <laughs> because Important you do. Question. If it, listen, if the pants. I don't think down, that's a tongue fuck. Okay. No. He's I think you have to literally tuck it in. You going yeah. back to your menswear days with the roll up a if, little bit? Uh, maybe I don't know. Okay. Mm, menswear wealthy. Yep. Oh. Back in the mix. All right. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> He's back like Jake Pulver, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Cactus Plant Flea Market Nike rollout. PJ Tucker just posted his pair. They're rolling out. I love this. The claymation videos, the sneakers themselves, how they first showed up. Did you guys see the latest clip? It was, uh, you remember the old viral video, Sammy Stevens, Flea Market Montgomery? You remember that back in the day? Yep. It's just like a mini mall flea market Montgomery. (laughs) <laughs> the totally blank <laughs> look I, I you gave me. But you've been really into the into yes. the rollout and yes, for sure, the shoes. For sure. You like the shoes too. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, we've spoken about them a decent amount on here, and I do think they're absurd. But I like the absurdity sometimes, and I and I love the claymation videos. Those are made by that guy AZXD. I think his name's Azod. Sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly. On Instagram, just just a cool package around around the shoes. And the friends and family are getting like the little tags to their name. You know the clips. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't relate. Of course, I'm neither friend nor family, but just wanted to tip my you gotta, cat where You got to fix it at ComplexCon. That's yeah. right. Cactus yeah. Plant Flea Market, heavy at ComplexCon. Yes. Creative director. Absolutely. Maybe we could drop some pairs there. Do you think we can Maybe. make that happen? Can we pull some know. strings? We can't put that out there yet, but you never know. <laughs> Stranger, show, things, show the shoe up. Stranger things have happened at ComplexCon. Some surprise drops. I'm sure there will be. I hope so. Same. Can I talk briefly about Lil Yachty Nike? Yeah, go on. never has to be briefly with Yachty. <laughs> this made the rounds a couple weeks back. Um, Yachty appeared in a Cool Kicks YouTube video saying, I just did a force. And he was kind of coy in the clip. And he didn't say, like, I've got a Nike deal or anything Very like nonchalant that. about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And some people have reported it as maybe there's a Lil Yachty Nike Air Force One coming. The guy even asked him in the clip, but like, oh, you got a Nike deal? And Yachty goes, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. So as I understand it, there's no retail project coming okay. for a Lil Yachty Nike Air Force One. Nike did make him some promo Air Force One sneakers, but it ends right there. So got it I think for his people, tour? Yeah, I believe so. Oh, have you have you seen them? No, I've not seen them. Uh, no I should have lied and been like, yeah, I've seen them. I wonder what yeah. they I wonder what those look like. I feel like you'll see them before I see them. Interesting to see those. You and Yachty are close. I'm interested to see what those look like and Air Force One. Hmm. I feel like there's like a lot of pressure, right? I mean, he has good taste and he's a huge sneaker head. He is a Another one, like we, a lot of times we talk about designers opening up the archive. He is a archivist. He'll be in there with I the gloves you. on. I, I, with the, not the Y three gloves though. But <laughs> I always go back. When, you know, I think when we do these shows, we think about moments. One of my favorite moments, and I'm paraphrasing, is like he's like, if I see a, a garage sale on the like on the street, I'll pull over and look for some like obscure ACGs. It's in the complex closets the the second one we did and he was like i just the soul even if the soul's like ripping apart he just like respects the design of the sneakers so i've been waiting for him to have his hand at designing for sure 
I wonder how often that is successful pulling over to a yard sale or garage. I feel like it sounds fun. I feel like, like it's sneakers. so hit or miss yeah. that it's yeah, like Yeah, but it's a fun adventure. Yeah. I have been to a million garage sales in my What was life. the best item you ever got? I don't know. We were just looking for records on behalf I feel like actually that. finding a sneaker at a yard sale, not like a thrift store, yeah. is so difficult yeah. and then actually find it in your size and mm. et cetera, et cetera, yeah, yeah, et cetera. Yeah. Um, it surprised me because you mentioned cool kicks. And I had seen a video about uh, how many, like this just shocked me. Just, this is from, just from a, a retail standpoint. It was just a hypercut of how many people were trying to s sell fakes throughout the course of, I don't know if it was like a week or month or whatever, but the amount of people just going into a consignment oh, store yeah. and trying to be like, hey, how much, like, how much can I get for these? And it was just all fakes. That's a big YouTube content as well. Yeah. That's yeah. like, yeah. It just shock. I can't imagine just like working at those stores and having the pressure of like. Trying I would. To I would never ever sign up for that gig. And shout out to the brave people who have. But like, first of all, being the one who feels confident enough to say yes or no, the sneakers fake. People sometimes will send me photos of stuff and be like, "Oh, do these look good to you? Do yeah. these look legit?" I always just say like, "Ask somebody who's yeah. more knowledgeable than me, or put it on the Check Check app, or." You know, have your friend at StockX take a look at it because, like, I am not one to ever feel confident about and being able you, to look at a and shoe. And have you be yeah. the one who like stamped it as like the official exactly, and then you sell pressure. it in your store. You know, like, and also imagine how uncomfortable it is. And I haven't seen a video you're yeah. talking about, but having to reject people and let them know, hey, tough one, eh, ruin their whole day. Eh, we're not gonna take this. And maybe you don't say up front that it's fake, but still, that's. I think I think it was just like, hey, you know, uh. Yeah, we're not really looking for those. Uh, you know, they don't really sell that well in the store. Just mm. kind of like just a, lie to them. Yeah. What would you? How would you handle that? I feel like you would have a gavel. Fake. You know these are fake, yeah, right? I feel like that's. <laughs> that's what are you trying to be. do? Exactly. That's how he would be. Well, you know, I, this is against the rules exactly. of the culture, right? How well, dare you? I feel like it's there's probably like two sides to or two different sort of interactions. The way that this people can go. are trying to get over. There's people who are trying yes. to get over on yep. you. And because the, the one the question is just like, where did you get these from? Oh, my friend gave them to me. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's a clear sign that mm -hmm. these are probably fake. Um, there were some people who were saying, You mean oh, because I, it's just a vague answer? It's kind of, yeah, you're kind of like BSing around, you're like beating around the bush of like, oh, your friend just gave you a pair of Dior Jordan 1s? Like, yeah. what, a, what a friend, what With a friend. friends like right. these. Your friend just gave you a pair of Grateful Dead Nike SBs? Like, they just had them sitting around, like, yeah. waiting kind of for suspicious. you? And then there's people who, there's pe who bought, who got got. Got. Yeah. I don't know if how true it was. Some people are like, "Where'd you get them? Oh, Stock X." Like, oh, no. just pass the buck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Or, or that might even be for some people. That may even be the the sign they think they're going to get over on you because they say they got them at Stock X. Makes it right. seem like they're they're legit. Oh, it's got the tag on it. Yeah. Yeah. Did y'all ever run into fake shoes working retail in oh, sneakers? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I remember yes. a pair of fake Air Max two thousand nines, in like. The black and red, like the OG yeah. colorway of that shoe, and like with the a, red bag, right? Yeah, it had a like a black upper red bag, and had like a big cushy sole on it. But you know how it almost looked like a the one he had almost looked like an Air Max ninety seven bubble. It was like real, like were they trying to return them? He's like, oh, I got the, you know, I just bought these here, and like, uh, I'm like, dude, these you didn't get? These. He's like, what do you mean they're? He was like trying to be like, oh, what yeah. do you mean they're fake? I'm like, dude, you bought them on some sort of. This yeah. was this was 2010, so okay. it's like, where are you gonna get the shoes if you don't? Maybe you got them on like FreshJordans.com yeah. or whatever the or name your favorite sneaker blog. FreshJordans J O R D A N Z dot com. Yeah, yeah. And how did the interaction were play you, out? Okay, had, were had, you very? Also, I think it had a receipt with it as well, and the receipt was super. It was a fake receipt. Yeah, you like looked at it, and it was just like the paper wasn't the same. It's like the printing. He's was holding like... up the paper to the light, like you do so, with the dollar, looking for the mylar strip. <laughs> so how? <laughs> How gratifying did you feel when you were in one of those battles at the register? <laughs> when it was like five minutes, no, I got them here, I got them here. And you knew, you knew that they didn't. And they were trying to like get over on you and well, try I to think, return. I think we had like the shoe out back. So like, you just brought them yeah, you're like a side-by-side -side like, comparison? This isn't the shoe. Do you remember in that moment, was the person mad? The guy was like, huh, what, really? He was like trying to like, he was like trying to act like bewildered. There's no reasonable expectation to you that that was a shoe that he didn't realize was fake? Well, he was claiming he bought it from the store. Okay. So you're trying to say you bought it from us and you're just trying to return it. 
Mm. And so you knew at that point. You knew it like you know you did not buy this. Like it's, there's no way possible that we just happened to have a fake yeah. out back that we sold you. Foot Locker Inc. would never do that. Yeah. And yeah, maybe there is the hypothetical thing that someone actually did return a fake. Oh, and so the fake is in the system. Yeah, yeah. and then <laughs> we <laughs> happen to somebody else bought. The, yeah, I don't. You know, the odds of that happening are very slim to none. But yeah, I just yeah, I just can't imagine like in today's day and world of just being at a consignment shop and having to because you're going to buy the shoe from a person uh, hypothetically, right? Cash know. them out. Yeah. Well, I guess if it's a consignment store, no, right? Yeah, but. or no, but some or consignment, but. Resale, resale, shops, resale yeah. shops do do buyouts. Yeah, yeah, of course. The little boxes were always just like you saw it coming. Like, what do you mean? When the size of the box. The, back yeah. in the day, the fake boxes were the They're easiest. like anemic looking. They're just like these it little. Was, tell like, me about this. Uh, so it was like, say you had like a regular Jordan box. Sturdy. It'd be like the size of this laptop. Good cardboard. Thick. No, uh, regular. Just regular Jordan boxes like we all have, you know? Mm -hmm. The fake ones, like it was skinny. so skinny and small. You would see, you would see the customer. You know, at finish line Bayshore, the register was all the way in the back. Uh -huh. So, like when I had time, they walk in the gate and they had the things, and it was like <laughs> the walk of shame. Yeah, it was like Jaws coming, dude. And I was like, I see the box already. It's did just they, not going to go did well. They ever break out the SpongeBob's on you, Joe? No, SpongeBob's was after my time. Okay, how did you handle those customers? Oh, with class. <laughs> <laughs> you, think, uh, you know, <laughs> sometimes, no, I mean, sometimes. Did you ever get into an argument with them? Oh, I mean, I got into a lot of arguments at, uh, Tell me. at finish line. I'm trying to think. A lot was just like able to prove it's not in the system. Yeah. One, I know that. You'd scan it and the barcode yes. wouldn't even be the same. Yes. One, I know that this is not in the system. Mm -hmm. And two, I know that you didn't get them from here. The other thing is I was working so many long hours. A lot of times they'd be like, I got these Thursday night. And you were like, buddy, I, I like, was what here time? They were like, I came in at like seven o'clock. I was like, yeah, I was here. I was here two to 10. Yeah. And, and you didn't. And a lot of it was like that. What's the real villain arc of like, there's a, say there was someone who tried to get you over on a pair of fakes at finish line back in the day, then how somehow they become famous and now they're a guest on sneaker shopping. Oh, God. <laughs> Just canceling the shoot. <laughs> yeah. No, but it was, it was more, you know, I, what I would say a lot of the arguments, mm -hmm. some were cut and dry. Hey, you didn't get these here and these are fake. Or like, we know that you're like trying to get over on us and yeah, it's just yeah, not working. Take advantage, yeah. But the loophole was damaging them out. You could like, dam like damaging a shoe out is like if you had an argument and then like you came to a resolution and it was like, Listen, we don't fine. We won't get our money back. Mm -hmm. Like you take the shoes back and damage them out. What does that it, mean? It basically goes back to the corporate. Like yeah, you put it as like a as like a write off. And it could be. I think the way you got around it back then was like the right toe. The, there was something rubbing against the right toe that needs to be looked into. As so if like, it were a QC issue. When exactly. In fact it was not. Yeah, that's exactly. How they would do like the air bubble sort of stuff back in the day where like if they were to take back a shoe with a popped air bubble, it would be like written off and then shipped back to the. So let me ask you, did anyone ever want a new shoe, had a really good selling day, didn't have the money to buy the shoe, and someone was like, you crushed it today, I'll damage the shoes you're wearing out and you Whoa, can, sounds oh, like, oh, this sounds I like fraud Joe. I totally no, forgot this about sounds that like fraud. No, that sounds like fraud I, I, I never did that it's but I definitely illegal. saw no, it no no I'm kidding, no I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Not, definitely saw that okay, okay. I feel Ex like that, explain it explain it so it's basically I love that we're back in the finish no line I just feel like you let the employee return shoes that they wore yeah, for a new pair you would take their old work shoes your co-worker yeah damage them out like and then I never did that but you could damage them out hypothetically and give them $130 worth of credit and then they get in the yes. system and then they could just pick out a new I pair of I feel like shoes. that that and as the manager you would do that at times I'm not for, saying I would do that I feel but like it that happened I feel like that happened I feel like they did it for <laughs> not to just like lace someone with a pair of Jordans mm. but it was more so like say you were like the assistant manager or the key holder as they were called like the shift like the shift leader yeah. or whatever and you had your pair of at the time would have been I don't maybe a pair of TNs like mm -hmm. a like a black pair of work shoes yeah mm -hmm. that you had worn for four months and they would damage those out and get you like a new pair of work shoes. Like it wasn't like anything like crazy. Like we're not going to give you like grape Jordan fives. Exactly. Got but it. I would give you a pair of Air Max 2009s triple black that you can now wear to work. Right. And day. I think the joke was like, can I damage them out? Can I damage them out? But did you ever, <laughs> let me ask you another thing about retail. Did you ever 
enter like the sales contests and try we, to win we, them. I, I don't remember having, we didn't have What's those. That? So basically I remember, you know, I brought up when we talked about no show socks, I brought up the Jason Richardson Reebok above the rim. And I remember for the above the rim campaign, uh, it was when, don't get into fraud here. <laughs> it's not fraud. No, nothing. But you had to submit like a, people had to submit rap, like a rap song. Okay. And for a Reebok competition. Yeah. And they yeah. got a you free pair. Of, I didn't do it, but I remember the winning rap song and I can't repeat the lyrics. <laughs> It's, what? I would not yeah. need to hear it. Wait, I can't. Wait, did you like contact? Too foul? Did you did you contact Jojo Pellegrino to ghostwrite you a verse? <laughs> uh, okay. Did he, ever buy shoes from, did he ever buy shoes from you back in the day? No, he didn't. I don't want to say the lyric. I remember one lyric of the winning one. I will probably cut it. Son of a plumber. Some thought I'd be dumber. Was one. No, that's good. Like that's not bad. Yeah. Just so I understand, that was part of a rap that somebody submitted as a finish line promotion with Reebok. Yes. In Back order in to win day. a free parachute. And I think it was around above the above the rim. Okay. Jason Richardson. I think even was that Steve Francis too? Me Let me check that. One thing I love about these stories <laughs> is well, hearing yeah, what? how much you guys are willing to fight for the company and stop anybody from taking advantage. I of, feel like of the store, well, but unless it was a coworker of yours, yeah. in which case we're happy to damage off no. the shoes for you and uh, take well, advantage. <laughs> no, that was like, I, to be honest, I think that's a good reward. Yeah, like a perk of the job. Reebok above the rim, Steve Francis. Look yeah, at, it was around that that era. Look, I had mentioned on here. I don't think it was really that you cared about the store that much. It was just the way that Foot Locker uh, damage set up the system where if they returned the shoe, they took the dollar out of your paycheck. So it wasn't like you were trying to fight. Oh, that's painful. You weren't trying to fight for the store per se. It was that like Foot Locker actually unpaid you if someone returned the shoe that you sold them. Oh, that hurts. Yeah. or You were fighting for your own paycheck. Yeah, or they unpaid you. Or if someone stole the shoes from the store and then your audit at the end was over 1% shrink, you like could get fired from your job. Yeah, the shrink. Yeah. So we it's not, it's not necessarily before. that you're like, hey, I don't care about uh, someone stealing from the store like hey that's the company's thing yeah. you're like hey if you guys steal too many shoes for my store oh, yeah. i'm not gonna have my job so people would chase the people down in the in the mall for the them. other random thing dm visits how were you on those oh dude those were the, the worst. worst talk about that district manager visits pop out unexpected uh, no you got word that they were in the area the next oh, oh. i think so and so is going to be in the area tomorrow and you know what that meant even if you were working one to 10, you were working one to two, cleaning up the store and- Making some, everything sparkle. And then the next day you're like, hey, did, is he here? Is, is she here? Is he here? Sometimes they didn't show up. It was like the final boss was coming through <laughs> and you had to clean the whole store. But the best part- Did you ever blow it when the district manager was coming through? I mean, some sometimes it wasn't always me because yeah. I was never the manager. It yeah. was always someone above me, but sometimes I'd be like, listen, this is in bad shape. But the best part about DM visits, it's like 1245 and there's like one big section of the store that like needs to be, it could be old signage. It could mm -hmm. be like racks that aren't filled up and you have nowhere to put them. The best part that I always loved was finding a place to put them. And it was the same place every single time for me. I would get, you know, the the ladders in the stock room that are high on mm -hmm. wheels. I would get them. I would get my friend and I'd be like, hey, we're putting these on top of the bathroom in the corner. Oh, was yeah. That high. was definitely that was definitely always a thing. Yeah. The really? Best the <laughs> hiding spot. The be because dark. there's just a bunch of junk in the store and you need to clean it up? See how dark it is over there? Yeah, imagine, I'm looking in the corner. Here yeah, the imagine how dark that corner is, but it being 12 <laughs> but, feet high on top of the bathroom. That, that's what I, would have to, I would have to have <laughs> he's, someone he's, spot he's me. He's lifting himself up out of take, his seat. <laughs> take the, the racks apart and we would just put them tuck them in and no one ever went up well, on the top the, of the, the bathroom. bathrooms is weird because it's like the bathrooms that every single footlocker they were like a like an igloo like in the sense that like it wasn't just like a door that went into like yeah. the wall or whatever it was like a hut that you could like climb on <laughs> climb on top of thousand percent it was yeah we are so two, deep right now two doors two doors <laughs> big it was box like sneaker it was like store climb. bathroom architecture it was like climbing the aggro grag remember that from uh yeah. nickelodeon <laughs> what is it guts yeah. Yeah. okay and you would go up there the other great thing that I, when i didn't want to be bothered i would eat my lunch up there don't bother me what you would sit on yes. top of the bathroom yes what yeah because i didn't yeah no also you're eating the sarku up there you just you could yeah you could hide there for a long time you on top hide. of the bathroom yeah no one would check 
<laughs> and you know what though? This is all valid because when I got on the sales floor, I was number one. We don't have to go back. We don't have to, we don't have to revisit the figures. But sometimes. Did you, did you ever have a meltdown on top of the bathroom, Joe? No, too high. Wealthy? Uh, probably in the back, not on top of the bathroom. Yeah. The top of the bathroom was like a whole nother world. What? I had my Sarku what? on the, the racks <laughs> and the other. I can't home. believe that's a real thing. Yeah. The top of the bathroom, great hiding spot for the DM. You come in, they come in with the, the checkboard. Oh, so clean, so clean. Want to see the top of the bathroom? I'll see you later. What did he say? You uh, yeah, want to see yeah, the yeah, inside? Yeah. See you later. No, don't go up there. Welty, did you ever blow a DM visit? No. You had to stay the whole night. I didn't blow a DM visit, but I definitely, there was one day where, because I live like an hour away from the store. They had like transferred me down to Boston, so mm -hmm. which was like a pain in the ass to drive down there every day. And this was like my last few months. I had had it, dude. The guy that I, the manager at the time that I was working with was a dude that was like roided out. Uh, at Foot Locker? Yeah. It like was just like hated everyone hated life like throwing crap around the store it was yeah. just like the worst really? sleeping on top of the bathroom not even going home to his family at it, night it was just the worst worst situation uh, i had been in and i was just like over the job wait yeah. was was you said muscular was he into fitness maybe you reconnect i think now? he was just doing i think <laughs> he was you. just doing <laughs> i think he was just doing roids but like oh. not eating clean and like getting like ripped so, just yeah. like roided out anyways with that said I was like, I was just tired of like working 50, 60 hours a week. So I, the store had to open at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. And we were supposed to get there at nine. But as long as you open the store by 10, like you were okay. Dude, it was, you were supposed to get there an hour before. It'd be like 9.58, but sometimes even worse, 10.05, little late. That yeah. was it. And I showed up at like, 1001 and I was like, ah oh, crap. Yeah. You know? And you can't hide it. It it clocks in. It clocks Into in. It'll be system. like Matthew J. Welty, 1005. Yeah. The auditor, not the DM, the auditor was waiting in front of the gate as I showed up. Oh my God. And I'm like, oh no. That sucks. Yeah. And that was uh Did you get a stern talking to or they just marked yes. it on the No, I definitely, and... yeah. Another game we used to do about the gate. Did you have a long gate? Yeah, yeah. I used to Turn the key. This is real American Gladiator stuff. Turn the key. I'll get one underneath. See, and try to run underneath. Slide so under. Eat, slide possible underneath. Style. Yeah. Well, the crazy part was is that Foot Locker at the time is that we would go back into the system and like edit the hours because you said oh. you sh they said you showed up. Um, this again. Wait, okay, no, so no, no, I can get into. It. I can get into. It. I can get into. Okay, it. No, I, that, uh, I can get into it. No, okay, I can get into it. No, hold, 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 let me get, I can get into it. I can actually get into it. Please, because. There was a class you can action. Get into it just like you did this. The system. Yeah. There was a class yeah. action lawsuit against Foot Locker, and they lost it. So I can like totally talk about this. You can. I mean, you can Google it. There was a no. Cla I'm, there I, was a class yeah. action lawsuit. I'm super interested. You because, know, I love sneaker lawsuits. Okay, so what happened was is that you would only get paid salary, right? You'd get paid like three hundred and fifty dollars a week plus two percent commission, okay. et cetera. In the higher volume store that you worked in, you'd get paid a higher base percentage. So it was like if the store, it was like there was different zones. It was like zone three, zone two, and zone one. And mm -hmm. if w where your store was in was like you'd get higher salary for the. You wanted to be in zone one. Yeah, but it was like the, you had to work in like a big volume store. It sure. wasn't easy to become assistant manager at one of those stores. You had to be like one of the best in the district, mm. right? He could have made it. I was at MIT, and they were like, I did the Magic Johnson. They were yeah. like, you're going to get your own store in six months, and I did the Magic Johnson. I'm not going to yeah. be here. <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, the, you know yeah, that? Yeah, 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 but yeah, so yeah. we had to work. I know. We'd Sorry. get paid off of 40 hours, <laughs> but they would have us work like 50, maybe 60 hours. If, you're, if your manager was on vacation, you had to work the whole week. Yeah. Um, open to close. You maybe got one day off, et cetera. You know, um, so what the company would do was, is you still had like a, an allotment of hours that you had to get um, for the week, for the week to divide amongst the staff, the staff, where you say you had like 200 hours and you had to like well, divvy them up, right? but you couldn't do, if you were over on hours, you would get like in a lot of trouble. Well, because it was, they were, it's the company like was paying more. You'd be paying over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You couldn't submit. You could not submit a, a the end of the week um, Report, pay, yeah. payroll with over hours. So you had to figure out a way to get under the hours. So you were getting paid the same regardless. So you were incentivized to actually lie about how many hours that you were working 
in the company. So as, they were as, as an assistant you manager to underreport your hours so that you didn't go over on the overtime. Is that yeah, but it? I wouldn't get paid more anyways. Yeah, but they were having me lie and like say that like oh I was working like thirty hours a week when in fact you were working like fifty five hours a week, and there was a lawsuit against Foot Locker and they lost it. Did you take the stand? I don't. No, I didn't. Just but like I had gotten. I had gotten. No, I had gotten a like a in notice the ma- about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And How recent. This was like maybe like twenty twelve or something mm-hmm. like that. And they said the reason why it was also illegal was because that the managers being on salary, you didn't make enough decisions in the store to be warranted as someone who's just on a salary basis as a manager. If that makes any sort of sense. Okay, I'm kind of following. Yeah, but it was basically there was a oh, what's the best way to describe it? It was just a standard practice essentially across the company for managers not to say how much they worked, you know, to underreport. Yeah, so they lost it. So would you have been a character witness if they called you? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I guess I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> Telling the truth on the biggest platform there is. Yeah. What crazier. are the other ways that people try to scam the store? I'm very interested in this scamminess that was happening. Stealing the right side from finish oh, yeah. line and the left yeah, side. Yeah, we from, talked about that before. You know that. Yeah. Credit card fraud. I've definitely seen that. But you ever have to chop somebody's card up? I don't confiscate think, the card. I don't think so. But credit card fraud. You I mean you have to watch out for that? Uh, people would come yeah, in. This more. is this is how old like old it is. It was uh, American Express travelers checks. Mm. They were trying to buy a bunch of Air Max two thousand nines with I the feel travelers like I checks. I remember that. They were fake. The dollar, uh, that's boring. You counterfeit pen. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, this is, I, I love yeah. to hear these old stories, and maybe some of them sound familiar to people, but it, yeah. it always sounds like such a thrilling place when you recall your days in sneaker retail. So I'm eating it up, me personally. I think the other thing we need to touch on, you reported. Oh, you want to get back to present day? Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, the latest in Yeezy release yes. news. Is this where we're going? Yes. Yep. Yes. The. Remainder of Yeezy releases for 2023 have been paused. We obtained an internal memo from Adidas about this. Basically, Adidas has been re-releasing Yeezys in 2023 in phases. Started in May when they did it all via DTC through Adidas' own channels. Followed up in August where it was also available at partner yeah. retailer accounts. They're almost like stealth like selling operations. Not really, but almost just like... Okay, drop it, boom. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. In and drop out. it and move on. Yeah, yeah, because they had all this leftover stock, about a billion dollars worth of Yeezys that were already in the works after they terminated their deal with Kanye West in 2022 after he waged this public war on Adidas yep. execs, made mm-hmm. all these anti-Semitic remarks. So yes. we obtained a brief internal message from Adidas saying, quote, as a brand, we will not do a new drop for the remainder of the year, both for our internal e and retail as well as wholesale we will not be shipping out any new stock. This direction was given at the board level. I have a question. Do mm-hmm. we know how many planned releases they had coming up for the rest of the year? It looked like a lot of shoes, okay. but it was just in one big like wave. And and the message I saw, this is pretty interesting, referred to it as Aurora 3, which okay. this sounds what? like super spy stuff. Basically, what I'm told from people who are familiar with how Adidas launches the shoes is that Aurora was like a code name for Yeezy drops. And that Aurora 3 refers to this being the third wave. Again, they started re-releasing the Yeezys in May, which I guess, mm-hmm. based on what people are telling me, would have been Aurora 1. And then the second phase would have been this this plan in August to drop the shoes at retail accounts as well. And then 3 would have been this November launch, possibly around Black Friday, where they get rid of even more stock. It's paused. We have it confirmed from a number of sources that it's paused. A lot of people picked up the news from us and said it's canceled or it's halted indefinitely. I feel like it's a little more nuanced than that. This still could happen at some point in the future, but the Adidas board did decide that no Yeezy releases right now for the rest of 2023. Do you think that this is what we're going to see? Every few months, there's a new tactic when it comes to releasing these sneakers. Hasn't it been... We're doing it this way. Yes. We're doing it that way. Yes. This is the latest. Do we think that this is what it's going to be until, what, the stock is done? Well, I feel like this was toward the end of the stock, if I understand it correctly. I'm not 100% certain on that. So I don't know how many more waves there were planned. I, as far as I know, there was not anything else in the works, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that. It's always hard to prove a negative. But I do think it's interesting where 
they kind of release this stuff in different environments and get to experience the feedback of whether or not Adidas can still release Yeezys in the future. And I think it's a question we've come back to a number of times of like, and I believe Adidas wants to know whether or not there's a future three years from now where they can safely release Yeezys without having to worry at all about the connotations of Kanye West or their previous business relationships with Mm -hmm. him. Because what I understand is this release was paused because of the war between Israel and Hamas. Mm-hmm. all the violence happening there because basically that and and this might sound like a stretch and when i first heard it it sounded like a stretch but it, it makes sense if you think about the context of adidas's relationship with Ye and and why they terminated his deal for the anti-semitic remarks so basically that adidas was worried that in this political climate right now that for them to mm-hmm. release yeezys was too risky because of Ye's anti-Semitic remarks, because if the wrong person wore the shoes or highlighted them and said that Adidas was in some way, you know, standing behind an anti-Semite, you know, with with everything in Israel and Palestine right now, that it would be too huge a potential for blowback. And for what I've heard too, just in general, in Germany itself, there's like much stricter yes. anti-Semitism laws. And expectations for obvious reasons, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The other thing is that you have to consider, too, the very recent history of Adidas almost reigniting controversy around Kanye West, like just last leaving, month leaving with the, the CEO. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Bjorn you mean, Golden. Yeah. yeah. Like he he goes on this podcast and he says, like, what did, what did he say, Joe? Didn't he say he didn't mean it? Yeah. He was like, Kanye West, he's a good guy. And yeah, he didn't really nice guy. Yeah, mean yeah. what he said, which like. Uh, maybe he's right in that he didn't mean what he said. I don't know. That's too deep yeah. a judgment to try and get into here. But after Adidas CEO Bjorn Golden made that statement, then uh, the CEO of the Anti-Defamation League goes on Twitter and says, I spoke with Bjorn Golden and he apologized for his misstatement. And Adidas issued a statement saying, we we stand by our decision to drop Ye. Nothing nothing has changed in it terms like of he was like maybe like testing the waters a little bit to see if he could like and that's get what over we with said, it. Leaving the like door open a little bit. But... So you do think that the stock is almost done? I believe so. And then after that? Well, I do think that there's a world in which they're trying to leave the door open or trying to test. And I I think a lot of people want that to be the case. I think sneaker retailers want that to be the case. They would love to drop Yeezys and not have to worry about any controversy and continue to sell that because so many of them are so dependent on that Mm -hmm. that business. It it was funny because over the weekend, I'm just at the local coffee shop. You saw a bunch. And I, you see a lot of 350s, per yes. sure, se. Even, even this weekend as well. But mm-hmm. I'm just getting a coffee and two women walk in next to me and one had the Wave Runners on. And then I think it was like the white version of that shoe, mm-hmm. uh, the triple white. Um, and I'm just like, wow. And like, they're both like brand new, yeah. fresh out the box-esque, you know? And I'm like, wow, there's still an environment where people are just super hyped on these sneakers. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And we, we've talked about that yeah. a lot. Definitely. The thing about Yeezys, too, is that I feel like it's the closest thing that Adidas has to Air Jordan in terms of it being yes. a super lucrative line yes. that they could just bring back year after year yes. and do in different colorways. Yes. Retro. And that, yeah, exactly. And that maybe in the future is not that closely connected to the person who inspired them. We talk about it a lot about how Air Jordans, for young people buying them, don't really mean anything in terms of their connection to Michael Jordan. So I could see Adidas wanting a future where they can sell Yeezys in a way that and Kanye West is, is isn't like totally dissociated and yeah. nobody thinks about Ye because they want that business that that represents a lot of revenue for them. Yeah. I've always I've always just wondered that where it's like how many people I'm not, and I'm not saying that you had to be the world's biggest Kanye fan yeah. to buy Yeezys etc just like a genuine genuine curiosity of mm. like how many people who were super hyped in going on the confirmed app, et cetera, yeah. to get the Yeezys were truly like adamant, like Kanye West yeah. music fans or people who just bought them, not because they didn't know who Kanye West was, but just because, you it's know- It's a cool the, sneaker. Yeah, cool sneaker and they're, they're into them and that's totally like, if that's your reason for buying them, like yeah. go buy them. I'm not, I'm not saying that, whatever, you know, like you don't have to have a, a pass a test to buy, totally. to buy the shoes. So, but I'm just curious that like how many people had been like from our generation and remember Kanye coming mm. up and listen to his music since, or it's a lot of younger kids. And I wonder how many of them went way back into the archive and have listened to, you know, late registration, Kanye, college yeah. dropout, yeah. et cetera. Just, just genuine curiosity out of it. Yeah. 
But I do think that this thing is a reminder for Adidas that it's not yet safe to just drop Yeezys at any right. point in time because yeah. it's still too fresh and there's still mm -hmm. too much risk. And it's a reminder of the risk that any brand carries when they have a long-term partner who you know, isn't one-to-one -one aligned with the brand. Isn't it crazy to think, it just popped in my head, that like maybe the touch, the cultural touch point for a younger generation getting into Kanye mm -hmm. is the Lil Pump, uh, I love it. You think? That was I don't like, know. That was I such a big, know. wasn't that such a big it, song though mm, at the time? It went for, number it, one, I believe. But for, they did it on went, SNL. Though. But you'd have to think though for like a, a younger crowd that like that could have been like one of the first times they got introduced to his music. Oh man, I hope not. Maybe. Could have been. Maybe. I'll also say that whenever these Yeezy things happen, there are whispers in the industry that Adidas is trying to bring him back or they're trying to work on something or this is a test. I don't know how true that is, but I think even if it's not intentional, this does give them a litmus test of like, oh wait, it's it's not always appropriate to drop Yeezys, at least for now. And I, I you know, the stock is still there, so yeah. I, I think this stuff will show up in the market eventually. I don't know when, but yeah, they definitely paused it for now. Shifting gears a little yeah. bit tonight, as we tape this opening night NBA basketball, what is going to be? The tunnel sneaker of the week. Are we going to see Kawhi in a new Joe Fresh Goods? Are Ooh, we going I would like to that. see yeah, that'd be cool. who's I mean, going to be I'm wearing not the see cactus? Because I don't watch basketball like that. But maybe, go on. Can maybe, you maybe. pretend for the sake of the content? <laughs> maybe Joe. Maybe Joe has something. Uh, Do you know? Maybe. Oh, oh. I'm not saying. I'm not, say, I'm, I'm not saying. I'm not saying for that, the tunnel. No, I'm not saying for. I don't know for the tunnel. Joe Fresh oh. Goods. Yeah, maybe he has something new along the way. Can't say what, but maybe he has something new along the way. Are we going to see some cactus plant flea market? I don't know if that shoe will look good in a gigantic NBA player size, like a Wemby size cactus plant sneaker. Oh, what's Did Wemby you... going to be wearing in the tunnel? A Nocta Clyde, like Khaled said. Yeah. Did you see the Did you see the picture of him where he's like in the defensive stance? You just see how long, absurd, his arms are. Absurd stuff. <laughs> he's looks great. He looks like he's going to be. We saw him next to Stash Wemby. Let's get you on sneaker shopping. We'll we'll go to San Antonio. Dave Matthews loves the Spurs. Has the fitted Dusty. Uh, but <laughs> do, you, do you think you it's have still an answer like, though? What do we think? Do you Tiffany think Air Force One? Like, no, that was no, last Tiffany season. Air Force One is do you think too... it's still like Travis stuff? No. What is going to be? We will see a lot of Travis sneakers. What is sure. going to be the sneaker of opening night and opening week? Do you have any predictions? I, I maybe some cactus plant stuff. Yeah. Mischief going to get involved at all? Didn't are they? Your boys in the tunnel? Big black boot. I don't think so. Maybe next week for Halloween. We should do a sneaker Halloween. That's next week? Yeah. Wow. We should do like a... Should we dress up as each other for Halloween? I'm not dressing wow. up. You giving out candy? No. <laughs> but Skechers being in the NBA, Joe, are you here for it? I'm not, I'm not too mad at it. Joel Embiid? You don't like it. I mean, we talked about it on um, Full Size Run. Right Go watch the, the one that runs run, uh, so. this week? Yes. Yeah, Devin that's right. Haney? Yeah, that's right. Is it a knockout? Don't test his hands. Don't test his hands. You see my hands over here? Look at. Yeah. I don't know about that's that. the that's the final season of Full Size Run, by the way. We we yeah, don't want to get talk about yeah, that. And you know we don't want to talk about it too much if it's not all of us together with yeah. Trinidad. But like, I'll say that like we made the decision ourselves. To end there the were show. a lot of comments saying uh, Complex messed up by canceling the show. I get why people think that and why that's a knee-jerk reaction uh, that's not the case we wouldn't come on here and lie to you about it we found what we thought was a natural endpoint for all of us to move on yeah and, and do different things you know trinidad has a lot going on yes. we have a lot going on yes. Yes. we put out a lot of content as is people look i'm so happy and so honored to be in a space where people look forward to what we do mm -hmm. and they're like what's next from you and for right now what's next is continuing to put this out and put all the other stuff out we put out a lot of videos like at yes. the height of full size run and the complex sneaker show we're doing like 80 episodes a year i yes. mean we're still going to give you yeah. 40 episodes a year yes. of the show we're still going to publish stuff give you the leaks give you the scoops and things like that we're just going to breathe a little bit but the idea right that now. complex canceled the show not in the that case. and i think i saw other ones saying oh where's the show going to end up next right you know no plans yeah no plans we're going to focus on this one though it's you know and there also wasn't some grand theory that this show's just or we're gonna replace full size run, you know? Like oh, no, no, no. Like, I, 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 saw didn't, people I didn't like, see anybody say that. No, no. I saw certainly I saw, not the yeah. case. You know. Bittersweet, but we're ready yeah. to move on. I tried to convince you guys. We appreciate that.
right? You did. This is true. We're going to have fun. But we're going to have fun with that. Yeah. And, you know, what a hell of a hell of a run. Hell of a little, literal, literal run. So many classics. Mm. We just didn't want to hold on for too long, you know. You know? felt like it was a natural end. We, and... wanted, we wanted to Seinfeld it. Mm hmm. There we go. Have you heard back from Jerry Seinfeld? Not speaking yet. of, no, still working on it. Jimmy didn't. Jimmy didn't work the magic for you. Not yet. Jimmy yeah. who? Jimmy Fallon over the Seinfeld. Oh movie. yes, yes, you're famous. Yeah, your your late night TV appearance that I had to talk to people about in all corners of the world over the past couple of weeks. Really? Yeah, you know, where's say? Joe? Joe's on Fallon. Go on. Standing Just kidding. Standing in the shadows of giants. Just you know, stop it. <laughs> speaking of the full Siren episode the other the other week. Uh, Black Thought saying he wasn't a fan of Sambas mm-hmm. ever, which mm-hmm. I guess surprised me a mm-hmm. little bit. Big Adidas guy, yeah. not, not into Sambas. I know we've already talked about the Samba wave here, but yeah. went out and I don't usually go out and about in the city as much, was out and about in the city a little bit mm-hmm. this week. I can't believe how many white and black Sambas, not the black with the white stripes, but the white, the black. Yeah. I would say more. Even more, more than the black ones, the white Because pair. the black and white ones still look like the indoor soccer. Yeah, they it do. still has that vibe. Yeah, they do. The white you know? one has a different kind of more fashion context or connotation. Absolutely. Do you think it's approaching panda dunk levels? No, no. In terms of saturation, I don't think it's no, close. I don't. No. Th- I don't think so. Um, but I'd say like. I'm not saying it's a totally different crowd, but maybe a little yes. like the Samba's a little more like niche fashion forward, yes. ubiquitous shoe. Where just Panda Dunk, a little Dunk, bit more intentional. Yeah, where Panda Dunk is just like just so mainstream that you just like doesn't mean anything. Yeah, I don't think you're seeing like I think with the Panda Dunk, you saw like a lot of just like younger people wearing it as well. You know, you see a lot of like kids, middle Teenagers, school, yeah, interesting, yeah, yeah, wear it. Where I don't think you really saw the Samba. It's like a little older of a crowd shoe to some extent. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Quick demographics scan. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that feels right. Yeah. That feels right to me. Taylor Swift and Air Force Ones, let me ask you something. It's not a conspiracy theory. You want, you want to fall on the sales report from me? Not the white, con- red Air Force Ones. White, red Air Force Ones. Not a conspiracy theory, and I could be wrong. I was traveling. Mm-hmm. Is it another photo where the shoe is cut off? You think that's on purpose? I mean, not she wore the new ba- the other New Balance. New Balance wasn't cut off. Though. You no, can see but on her foot. The other one, the new jo- the, the Johnny nineteen oh six. That, that wasn't was clear. The five fifty wasn't. The five fifty wasn't clear. It was like, but the Air Force One from s- is also cut off. She's giving Travis Kelsey a smooch on the cheek. Okay, right? Is yes, that the, in yeah. that photo, but <laughs> yeah. it's cut off again. Tell me about the conspiracy theory. Total speculation. Total, what, what is the tinfoil hat? Why are situation? all these head to toe photos cut off when she's wearing sneakers? I wish we had some X Files music we could put. In. Yeah, oh, mind blowing conspiracy theory. <laughs> this is, this I, is the I haven't first, even looked. And this is the first time. This is the first time that we've actually had a second to even like chew into the the Taylor Swift sneaker madness because I feel like we've talked about it every single time that. Uh, We've had the discussion for whatever reason. We've it been got off, like yeah. it got like fragmented, or yeah. Dave Matthews is asking us to repeat something and totally screws up the segment. Producer and let Dave me tell Matthews, you another thing, him, please. Okay, respectfully, please. <laughs> is this a Dave Matthews complaint? No. <laughs> I see Getting all the situated he- Travis chair. Kelsey. I see all the headlines that like uh, a lot of the mainstream media is doing. Travis Kelsey wore a pair of fifteen hundred dollar Nike SB Dunks. We see what you're doing. They were the Green Lobsters. We see that they're they're turning the, uh, I mean we do it too, but <laughs> it's very funny they don't say they you know right 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 the, the, fit, the shoe retailed exactly for a buck fifty but also or whatever I, I get it they're they're just creating content out of it but like you know kind of like a casual person who's interested in that storyline oh my Fif- god fifteen hundred yeah Nikes. it's smart it's good strategy but I see it it's well, like when Scott Disick went well he actually I think he purchased it but. The jacket? Yeah, that was like a headline. I thought it was like New York Post That's or right. something like that. We do it too. Yeah. We're guilty. Oh, shopping. They, yeah, we we in the headline. I get it. It's just how the 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 internet works. But yeah, just how the game goes. Fifteen hundred dollar rare pair, and it's the the Green Lobster. Shouts to Dion Point, who just celebrated his birthday. That's right. I was the first one to text him. I think Were I maybe you? texted him a day early. 
Twelve oh one, you set your alarm. You know, did you did you <laughs> see the story? Did you see the story in what was it, NY Mag about Shams? Oh yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked and about, about it. how he's 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 texting everybody Happy Father's Day. Yes, <laughs> you know all the sources and stuff like that. That's me. Did you resonate with the Shams when it said like, oh, we, we people say I'm paraphrasing the article. We mm. step back because we know that he's going to get the leaks or the scoops. Is that what no. how you feel sometimes when you're looking at SS24 on the Nike CAD? <laughs> no, there's people who've done a lot more consistent leaking than me. Have you, have you, uh, Z Sneakerhead, Z Did you Soul ask Shams Retriever. out to Finney Pizza to discuss <laughs> sources? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> have, have you, uh, kneecapped any, uh, designers or collaborators over your career, Brendan? You're like, hey, you know, X, X, Collaborator, you're like, I heard that like New Balance or Nike isn't. They're like, they're not giving many more shoes this year, so I don't. You it's time for you to step in. Yeah, you should. No, or, or like, you shouldn't give this guy a big deal because they're not offering him it, me insider trading in yeah. exchange for scoops. Yeah, never, never in my life. Mm. One sad note I do want to end on, but I felt like this is an important thing to mention because I saw a lot of mm. people in the sneaker industry posting about this: the tragic passing of Christian and Michelle Deaton mm. too. Nike veterans, a married couple who both worked there, they were killed in a bike accident in Napa, California after a piece of lumber slid off a flatbed truck that was passing them on the highway. Yeah. These are two names that I wasn't familiar with, but as soon as I saw the, the you know terrible news and saw people sharing, I, I just wanted to understand a little bit more about mm -hmm. who they were. And Christian in particular was somebody I think who resonated a lot with people in our space, people who run sneaker boutiques. Uh, I talked to Derek Curry from Sneaker Politics. Okay. He said that, Christian was a big reason that sneaker politics was approved for tier wow. zero. I talked to other people who said that when Adidas had its resurgence in the 2010s, that Christian Deaton was one of the guys who Nike tapped oh, wow. to really put together the offense to come back and get Nike back on top, help Nike a lot with undefeated and help undefeated get back to a spot where they're oh, wow. creating really big, powerful sneaker collaborations. So rest in peace to both of them yes. and our condolences to all of our friends who worked with them in the industry and were friends with them outside the industry. Definitely a terrible loss and something that some you know, sometimes these are these are names where you're like, have I have I met this person before? I don't really know. And then yeah. you see one person post it and you see another person post it and you realize, wow, these yeah. people really touched a lot of people a lot who of big impact. You know, who 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 we work with and who we're friends with. So rest in peace uh, to both of them and uh, our thoughts go to their family and their friends. Yeah. Definitely send in well wishes. Yeah. Tragic, yeah. tragic. Terrible news. <sighs> Not to end on a sour note, but yeah. Um, just just wanted to, you know. Definitely send our thoughts and condolences. Yeah. All right, everyone. Another week. This has been the Complex Sneakers Show. Hope everyone has a great weekend. Please like, subscribe. We will see you next week.